In part two of our mini-series covering adjusting entries, we're going to cover revenue-related transactions. Now, if you haven't watched part one, I'll link it up in the corner. I recommend that you start there. Otherwise, confusion, chaos, crying, nobody needs that. Welcome to Accounting How To. I'm your host, Carolyn Grimm, and that's my sidekick, Terrence. We're here to put the fun in accounting fundamentals. Now, as we talked about in the introduction to adjusting entries, at the end of every accounting month, we need to look at our accounts and make sure that we have a, an accurate balance in those accounts. So sometimes things have um, changed and they need to be updated. So in this video, we're going to explore our revenue-related adjusting journal entries. So when we're talking about adjusting entries, the first thing that we need to determine is, is this a revenue-related entry or is it an expense-related entry? So if it is a revenue-related entry, things like unearned revenue and revenue, um, accounts receivable, and some kind of revenue account, those are revenue-related entries that we're going to work on. So once we've determined that something is a revenue-related journal entry, the next step is to decide whether it's an accrual or a deferral. So an accrual means that the cash comes after. And you can remember that because cash after starts with an A, accrual starts with an A. So cash comes after, it's an accrual transaction. If the cash came before, then it's going to be a deferral. Don't get hung up on that because we're going to dig into it so that you can understand it better. So when we're looking at a revenue-related adjusting journal entry, we're going to next ask, what are the accounts that are being affected? So if it's revenue-related, there's a clue there, it's probably 100% going to include a revenue account. Well, with our revenue accounts, we can often have an associated liability account called unearned revenue or unearned fees or unearned whatever. Now, the other thing that can happen with a revenue-related transaction is that the other side of it is not a liability, but it is an asset. So an asset like accounts receivable. So when we're looking at a transaction, and we're going to look at a bunch of transactions, we're going to be looking at what are the accounts being affected? Is it a revenue account? And is that revenue account going to get paired with a liability account? Or is it going to get paired with an asset account? So if it is a deferral transaction, meaning the cash came before, like for example, we received a customer deposit, the cash came before, we can't claim that revenue yet because we haven't earned it. So a revenue in that case is going to be a deferral. And that means that we're going to debit a liability account and we're going to credit a revenue account. Again, don't get worked up about this yet because we're going to go through some transactions so that you understand what that means. Otherwise, it's just me going. Bop, 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 bop. All right. So if it is an accrual for a revenue account, the cash came after, then we're looking at debiting something like accounts receivable and crediting revenue. And this is a typical transaction that we've already seen because it's a normal transaction. We're going to debit accounts receivable. We're going to credit revenue. That's an accrual. Accounts payable, same thing. It's an accrual. We just didn't know yet what it was, but now we do, right? Now, every adjusting journal entry is going to impact one balance sheet account and one income statement account. Balance sheet account, assets and liabilities, income statement accounts, revenue and expenses. So we're going to be impacting one balance sheet, one revenue. So we're going to be impacting one balance sheet account and one income statement account in every transaction that we're going to do.
So let's look at some examples because that's when it's going to really start to make sense, right? It's not going to be me just bah, 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 bah. Ugh. So in our first transaction, we receive $500 as a deposit from our customer for work that's going to be done next month. So question number one, is it revenue related or is it expense related? Well, it's not spending money, right? We're going to get money, so it's revenue related. The second question is, did the cash come before or did the cash come after? Well, in this case, the cash came before we did the work. So this is not an accrual with the cash coming after, it is a deferral with the cash coming before. So we're getting the cash before we do the thing that we do. So the original transaction, when we received this money, we would have debited our cash account to increase it, and we would have credited this account called unearned revenue. So unearned revenue is a liability account. So anytime you see something called unearned whatever, it is a liability account. So in this case, we're using the term unearned revenue. It could be unearned rent, could be unearned subscriptions, unearned insurance premiums, it could be anything. Uh, but there is going to be a, a liability account called unearned something that's going to match up with a revenue account. So in this case, we've got unearned revenue, and then later on we'll have revenue once we've earned it. So in this case, we have a liability. We owe the customer that money until we do the work. So cash, debit $500, unearned revenue, credit $500. It is a liability. So now time has passed, as time does so quickly. So we have completed the customer's work. So now what needs to happen is we need to take that unearned revenue liability and we need to get rid of it because we have completed our transaction for this customer. So we are going to debit unearned revenue to decrease our liability and we're going to move it now into revenue because we've earned it and when we've earned revenue, we can claim it. So we're going to credit our revenue account by $500. So when you're doing adjusting journal entries, it's really important to understand what the original transaction was. And if you're doing this as an accounting student, you're going to be thrown things without that context. And so what you need to do is to understand the context from your own knowledge, because the textbook is not going to tell you. So you're going to have to be able to think this through. So always think in terms of what was the original transaction? Where would this have gone? Now in our second transaction, let's look at this situation. A customer prepays us rent. So we have a building that we're renting out, customers paying us rent. So they have prepaid us three months rent at $400 per month. So they're paying us $1,200 for three months of rent in advance. So the original transaction would have been, we received cash, $1,200, and this is going to go to a liability account called unearned rent. So we are using that liability account to keep track of the rent that our tenant has paid us in advance. So the original transaction, we're debiting cash to increase our cash, and we are debiting this liability called unearned rent. So a month goes by. At the end of that month, the first month that has expired, we have used up $400 of that prepaid rent. So now we need to take one month's rent, $400, out of our unearned rent account and we need to move it into rent revenue because we've now earned that rent. So we're moving it from our liability into our revenue account. We've now earned it. Now, if we did not do that, we just left it sitting there in our unearned rent account, we would not have an accurate picture of what's going on in our business. We would not have revenue to report on our income statement and we would have this liability on our balance sheet that was not correct. So when we do an adjusting entry, 
what we're doing is we're making sure that things are in the categories that they need to be in. Now, those were two examples of deferrals. The cash came before. Now, let's look at an example where the cash is going to come after an accrual. So, in this case, we have a customer um, that we have done work for, but we have not yet billed them. And this happens in my business. If I'm working on a project um, and it carries from one month into, into the next month, I'm probably not going to do an invoice in the first month and then do another one in the second month. I'm going to wait and do one invoice at the end of it. But in that first month, I have earned the revenue, right? I have earned the, I better have. <laughs> so I've done work for my client, but I haven't billed them yet. So here's what that's going to look like for the original transaction. There isn't one. So we haven't done anything yet. But what we do need as an, as an adjusting entry is we need to recognize that revenue for the month that we're in. So we're going to do an adjusting entry for an accrual. The cash is going to come after. So in this case, we're going to debit accounts receivable for $500, and we're going to credit our fees earned revenue account for $500. And this acts as a placeholder. So later on, I will bill that client. But for right now, what we need to do is we need to recognize the revenue and we need to have that placeholder of an accounts receivable amount that we will get later on. So an accrual is going to impact something like an accounts receivable for uh, revenue related transactions and accounts payable for expense related transactions. So those are the typical kinds of adjusting entries that you will see for revenue related transactions. And if you're one of my accounting students, those are going to be the typical adjusting entries that get thrown at you in your first accounting class. And so you will have a better understanding of those and you'll be able to rock those on your homework and your test. So in the next video, we're going to jump into expense related transactions and we're going to break those down by accruals and deferrals. And then in the final video for this series, we're going to go through an entire example of these transactions and then take it into an adjusted trial balance and then into financial statements. So you're going to get the whole picture, soup to nuts. So I'll see you in the next video. And until then, Stay balanced, my friends.